These marriages with two stars usually don't work out. Tonight, on Much More Music, Jan Loves Ben. Is that a crime? All access. No more horsing around. She's every guy's fantasy. She's the simple girl from the Bronx. And he's the sexiest man alive. How do you like these apples? She's in and out of marriages. I've been married twice, but I haven't had a marriage. And he's in and out of rehab. Will it last forever? You decide. Watch Jen Loves Ben. All access tonight on the Much More. The kind of romance that can only happen in Hollywood. I think this is one of those love affairs that's really real. They are going to be one of the biggest couples in Hollywood. He's the sexiest man alive. How do you like these apples, man? And she's the hottest woman on the planet. I'll take it. <laughs> these two crazy kids got engaged in a heartbeat. Now find out how it happened and what the future holds for Hollywood's hottest couple. Next on VH1 All Access, Jen Loves Ben. They were just supposed to act like they were in love. But as Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck filmed their first movie together, Gili, in late 2001, the on-screen romance turned into a real-life love affair. A lot of those romances break up when the movie's done. In this case, I don't. it doesn't look like that's going to happen. They've been head over heels since the moment they've been publicly together, you know, always holding hands, always kissing, arms around each other, very supportive of each other. And um, now they're engaged, and we can all look forward to a big wedding. He is my partner. He is my best friend. You know what I mean? And we talk about everything, and we support each other to the end. The two have been caught canoodling both on and off the set. They've made some efforts to keep the romance private, but mostly Jen and Ben have been all about PDA. I don't think it would be our business what Jennifer and Ben do if they didn't make it our business. And... You know, they could hide it, they could be a lot more discreet. Now people screaming, what to deal with you and so-and-so. I tell them, mind their bits, but they don't hear me, though. Heck, there's even a Jen and Ben video game. Commissioned by their pal, director Kevin Smith. He gave them the game titled, Jen Saves Ben, as a gift. In the game, Ben and Jen are on a date, on a dinner date, and Ben gets dragged away by ninjas. And now Jen has to go save him, except, of course, she doesn't know where he is. And if she finds him, little movie plays about, uh, with them kissing. All the public smooching and the fact they're starring in two movies together, Gili and Jersey Girl, has some insiders wondering if the whole thing's a publicity stunt. I don't think they're trying to fool anybody. I think they genuinely are in love. But are they in love with each other? Or are they in love with glamour and attention? However, the tabloids view the romance. With a 2003 wedding date in the works, Jen and Ben are shaping up to be Hollywood's biggest power couple. Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are now, for this generation, they're the Liz Taylor and uh, Richard Burton. They're definitely the hottest couple of the moment. Today, Ben is officially the sexiest man alive. No, I'm not. I'm out, man. Uh, ben Affleck. That's good. Oh, it's Ben Affleck. It's Oh. And J-Lo's never been hotter. As a sex symbol, a businesswoman, and an all-powerful media force. She is on fire right now. She's got four great movies out in less than a year. She's got a platinum album. She's got a new fragrance line and a clothing line. And she's just everywhere. Just turn it up and turn it on. But as Jenny from the Block loves to remind us, she came from humble beginnings. She's the simple girl from the Bronx. She made it onto the radar, and then she launched her very first CD, On the Six, which was named after the train that she used to take into Manhattan because she was this little girl from the Bronx, and she always wanted to make it in Manhattan, so she would come in for dance lessons. While Jen was riding the six train, Ben was hanging around Harvard, but as an outsider. His dad was a social worker and even worked for a time as a custodian at the Ivy League school. What's so interesting is that Ben and J-Lo on the surface look very different, and yet their backgrounds are extremely similar. They both came from working class neighborhoods. He from Boston, she from New York in the, in the Bronx. Uh, their mothers are both teachers. Her father was a worked in computers. She's still very close with her dad, though 
their, her parents divorced, as did Ben's parents. So they both have this history of, of divorce in the family. Both Ben and Jen took their lumps early in their careers. As a fly girl on the Living Color and an extra in a Janet video, Jen was the resident hoochie mama. As for Ben, he was getting stuck with bit parts. Earlier in his career, Ben was being cast as a bully. Look at more rats and days and confused. Ben's real breakout role as a leading man was when he started chasing Amy. And following that, he had a huge accomplishment when he and Matt Damon received an Oscar for Goodwill Hunting for screenwriting. And of course, that movie was a big blockbuster. A year later, a buff Ben took his place among the Hollywood beefcake in Armageddon. Clearly, he's working his way into fleshing out that matinee idol you know, image that he has, and certainly his looks give him all the, uh, the means to be a sort of car cable. But it took more than just looks to steal the heart of America's dream girl. If I had to describe him, I'd probably say that he's a brilliantly smart, loving, charming, affectionate, and I just admire him in every way, you know what I mean? I, like, I respect him. Um, I feel like he teaches me things. So he's a catch. She's every man's fantasy. How did the engagement made in Hollywood heaven come to pass? It's absolutely a storybook romance. I mean, think about it. There's this girl, this Puerto Rican girl in the Bronx, this kid in Boston. They have nothing to do with one another. Totally different lives on the surface. And yet, work, destiny, fate, whatever you want to call it, brings them together. And boom, the sparks fly. When Jen and Ben met on the set of Gigli, they were wary of each other at first, with good reason. Jen was married to dancer Chris Judd, Ben was known as the proverbial playboy, but soon they became good friends, and then lovers. I feel like in the beginning, us having the opportunity to become friends for a very long time without ever any romantic thing at all was a very big plus. Reports of Jen and Ben sightings started coming in fast and furious. The one thing you hear from people who've seen them together is how much they are in love, how you know they are always touching each other, they're kissing. There's, you can see the sparks flying between them, and uh, it's real. Jen and Chris were in the process of separating and filing for divorce, and Jen and Ben were falling head over heels for each other. It was starting to get serious. The big moment came when Ben invited Jen to his parents' house in Massachusetts. One of the first things he did once he and Jennifer got to know each other was to bring her home to meet Mom. And how fantastic, he ended up proposing to her at, at his mother's house. The engagement was kept hush-hush, but soon people were starting to notice the massive pink ring on Jen's left hand. It sure looked like an engagement ring, and it was something to behold. Ben did a really nice job with the ring. <laughs> you did good. It's the most magnificent thing I've ever seen. I still look at it, I kind of marvel at it, like... <laughs> you know? Color diamonds are the thing of the moment. It's all about color, and it's all about size. And whoever says size doesn't count isn't talking about jewelry. <laughs> Jen tried to be coy about the engagement question when she appeared on MTV, but her attempt at spin control was hardly convincing. I think everybody will know soon enough. It wasn't until November 13th on ABC's Primetime Live that Jen finally dropped the bomb, confirming the engagement and recounting how it happened. So we walk up to the, the house and I see like little candles up the stairs and I'm like, oh, look how cute his mom must have heard that I like candles or something from the tabloids. And um, he opens the door and it is just a blanket quilt of rose petals all over the whole entire house. At the end, he just said, will you marry me? So it looks like one of the biggest Hollywood romances in years is headed straight down the aisle, but we can think of a few people who shouldn't hold their breath waiting for invites. Coming up, how does old flame P. Diddy measure up? Hollywood. And of course, the biggest notch on Jennifer's belt up until now was P. Diddy. Everybody knows the history of that. I do not own a gun. Puffy has been very public talking about how the breakup with Jennifer was very difficult for him. So how did the two most famous loves of Jen's life stack up against each other? Phew, P. Diddy and Ben. <laughs> Let's take a look. We'll start with that all-important category, height. Ben's got the edge in this one. He's six foot two, while P. Diddy stands at just five foot nine. 
I saw P. Diddy at a party. He's a lot shorter than I thought he was going to be. Next category, gift giving. Ben made a huge score with that massive engagement ring. He's also given her a Rolex and a Ferrari. And he bought Jennifer's mother a Mercedes E-Class sedan. But P. Diddy was no slouch either. Lavishing J-Lo with a $300,000 Bentley. The Bentley to you, but to me it's a blue car. And on one occasion, even sending her 100 white doves. This one's a tie, but Ben should probably get a holster for that credit card. Next, side project. P. Diddy's got his career as a rap mogul, Ben's got his as a movie superstar, but P. Diddy's diversified with his lucrative Sean John clothing line, and Ben's branched out as a TV producer with Project Greenlight. It's new, it's interesting. Ask yourself this question. When Mama wants a new pair of earrings, which business is going to bring in more loot? A major fashion corporation or a short-lived reality series? When it comes into who brings more money, P. Diddy's got it hands down. Next category, behavior. Let's face it, neither one of these guys has been the same. P. Diddy has had some scrapes with the law, while Ben had to check himself into rehab. Now both guys have apparently cleaned up their act. Another tie. Last but not least, artistic merit. Ben's got an Oscar. Those things are not easy to do. Hold up, stop. stop. Now wait a minute. Diddy's got a Grammy. Okay, I can't say. The difference? Ben wrote the original screenplay for Goodwill Hunting that won him the Oscar, along with Matt Damon. When it comes to P. Diddy's big hit, the Grammy-winning I'll Be Missing You, he got just a little too much help from a guy named Sting. Advantage? Ben. Jennifer's career is going definitely in the direction of Hollywood royalty, and I think that Ben fits now that for the girls. Just like Ben and P. Diddy, Jen and Gwyneth are very different animals. Gwyneth versus Jen. Gwyneth seems very white bread, a little more uh, erudite, uh, a little more studied and controlled. And J-Lo is sex pot, steamy, hot, Latin lover. I don't know what man would turn down J-Lo. Ben and Gwen were the sort of romance of Hollywood, the little Hollywood it couple for a long time. Obviously that broke off. And then when Jen sort of enters the picture, ah, it makes sense. This makes so much more sense. It's the differences between all the people that they've dated, which makes their relationship so much more interesting. So how will Ben and Jen fare together? <laughs> Marriages between high-powered celebrities are notoriously tough. You know, you date another actor, particularly when it's very famous, you know, it's going to come with a bunch of stuff. They're both such superstars that if they can each be accepting and, and tolerate the ups and the downs and one step back, almost like the cha-cha, if they can cha-cha with each other in terms of their careers, they'll make a much better go of it. The potential couple totally different than anything else you've ever experienced. Ben's always been known as the prototypical Hollywood playboy, the kind of guy who liked to get the party started and finished right. A man whose little black book was apparently overflowing. He was a player. He, uh, you know, he, it looked like he was going to marry Gwyneth Paltrow for a, a while, and it was sort of on again, off again. Most of my prior relationships, uh, you know, I don't have a great relationship with him, but obviously Gwyneth is not only a tremendous actress, but uh, she ended up being a good friend of mine. Tell Ben to shut up. Ben's also been linked to former Jerry Seinfeld squeeze Shoshana Lonstein and Carrie Fisher. He's one of the kindest, gentlest creatures I've ever worked with. And then there's Britney. If you watch Britney's video, I Love Rock and Roll, real close, you'll see what looks like the name Ben and a phone number written on her hand. In late 2002, one tabloid reported that it was a Britney Ben affair that broke up Britney and Justin Timberlake. For Jen, when she met Ben on the set of Gigli, there was a hitch. One problem which was she was married at the time. She got involved with Chris Judd, one of the dancers who had been on her tour, and they were married within about nine months. They looked, you know, deliriously happy together, and yet, eight months later, they split. I've been married twice, but I haven't had a marriage yet. Chris wasn't Jen's first husband. There was another short-lived marriage to waiter turned restaurateur Ohani Noah in 1997. They were very happy together, but the marriage only lasted, I think, a little over a year. Ohani spoke out after the Ben and Jen engagement became public. He was like warning Ben Affleck, uh, you know, it'll be great while it lasts, but don't expect it to last because she, she loses interest and, and moves on.
you know, that might be just sour grapes on his part. There's a big difference between staying married to a, a waiter and staying married to one of the biggest... So far, the couple seem to be getting along just fine. Ben has become her muse. He appeared in her cheeky video, Jenny from the Block, and he helped her come up with the title for her latest album, This Is Me, Then, which even has a song called Dear Ben. There is. There's a track on the new album called Dear Ben, yes. All the mushy talk in the world won't stop the rumors about their relationship. One British tabloid claimed J-Lo demanded a prenuptial agreement that guaranteed they'd have sex four times a week and millions of dollars from Ben if he cheated. Given the Hollywood rate of divorce, which is uh, dealing with marriages that are less as long as three minute eggs, they better have a prenuptial agreement. The most widespread rumor out there is that the J-Lo Ben romance was manufactured to drum up publicity for their two movies. There are cynics that say, isn't it funny that they're just getting married when a movie's being made and come out? So is all this for real? Ben took out an ad in The Hollywood Reporter after Gigli rapped, gushing that Jen had shown dedication, diligence, humility, graciousness of spirit, astonishing talent, real poise, and true grace. Quite a list. If Ben and Jen are putting us on, it's one heck of an act. What I knew that was different this time is that I was just more scared. So Ben and Jen press on toward what promises to be one of the all-time super-powered Hollywood weddings. What's the first question friends asked Jen and Ben when they got engaged? Probably, have you set a date? There was talk that there was a wedding planned for Valentine's Day. Could be possible, could be the very romantic element that she's looking for. One thing's for sure, they can't get married until after January 26th, when Jen's divorce from Chris Judd becomes final. If Jen's engagement ring is any indication, the event will be extra fabulous. The $1.1 million ring Ben gave her features a 6.1 carat pink diamond. Pink diamonds are relatively rare, so it's quite unusual to, uh, to find these little gems in the first place and uh, quite another to find anything of, of substantial sizes. It's huge. It's like an asteroid on her finger. You can't miss it. When J-Lo and Chris got married, it was an extremely private and reportedly low-key affair. Will Jen and Ben follow the same plan? I am sure that it's going to be a big wedding. There's going to be a lot of money being spent. These two uh, are not afraid to, to open up their wallets and spend some money. We want to do it, um, but there's, there's no rush at the same time. It's something that we would like to do as soon as possible. Whenever it does happen, it'll be a big, gorgeous wedding, probably in a church. We'll do it where it's good for all of our families and, you know, where it'll be a really big celebration because, you know, I just want to do it right. You can bet celebs will be dying to get on the guest list. Who's in? Matt Damon's a lock. We were at the premiere of Made in Manhattan and Matt Damon was there and we asked him if he's going to be the best man for the wedding and he told us that it's not going to be him but it's probably going to be Ben's younger brother Tayson. Ben and Jen are both very family oriented so there will be no guarantees this will be a star-studded affair. In terms of celebrities, Kevin Smith I'm sure is, gonna, is going to be there. Um, wouldn't be surprised if Tommy Mottola makes an appearance. Uh, wouldn't be surprised if Ray Fiennes shows up. If Jen's going to get flashy with anything, it's going to be with what she wears. Is that a crime? All right, then. Ooh, the dress for her last wedding cost $100,000. I think Jennifer has quite the challenge on her third wedding dress. First of all, it will be one of the most famous wedding dresses of all, without a doubt. But the most important question of all remains, if they get hitched, will it last? These marriages with two stars, two superstars, putting aside Paul Newman and Gerard Woodward, usually don't work out if you think about it historically. One thing's in their favor, Ben's trying to stay sober and Jen's a well-known teetotaler. She's incredibly driven, incredibly focused, incredibly ambitious and has made um, pretty impressive decisions in her life and in her career and that doesn't go at all with drinking and partying constantly. Right now, Jen and Ben are acting like they're ready to settle down. I definitely want to have a family. Really, really bad. You're not going to have any better genetic structure than what you're getting right now. So, is Ben the one for Jen? 
Is Jen the one for Ben? We'll just have to wait and see. Whether or not Jennifer and Ben ride off into the sunset is really anyone's guess, but they will ride off in a spectacular fashion. These marriages with two stars usually don't work out. Tonight on Much More Music, Jen Loves Ben. Is that a crime? All access. No more horsing around. She's every guy's fantasy. Just a simple girl from the Bronx. And he's the sexiest man alive. How do you like these apples? She's in and out of marriages. I've been married twice, but I haven't had a marriage. And he's in and out of rehab. Will it last forever? You decide. Watch Jen Loves Ben. All access tonight on Much More Music.